Obviously, there's a ton of Pokemon out there, and there are plenty that rightfully get plenty of love. However, there are also a ton of Pokemon that aren't quite as fortunate, as some are either not as popular, or in some cases, even get some hate. And when you've been playing Pokemon for over 15 years like me, you find yourself loving some Pokemon that others don't love as much, feeling like they're underrated. That applies to me too, and I want to give some of those Pokemon some much needed love today. Now, obviously, what I find to be underrated will vary from person to person, but these are some Pokemon that I feel like deserve way more love than they actually get. So, let's get to that list then. Kicking things off, and number 10 is actually my favorite Pokemon, Primarina. Now, spoiler alert, this isn't the only member from this line that we'll be seeing on this list. But let me start off by saying that I think all the evolved starters are fantastic, and while many love the Sidua and Incineroar, the same can't quite be said for Primarina, unfortunately. And that's a shame, because I think Primarina is just as fantastic. But that said, I'm not going to gush about it quite as much since I already did so in my top 20 favorite Pokemon video that I did last year. So if you want to hear my full thoughts on Primarina, I'll leave a link in the description and a card at the end of this video. But long story short, I think this Pokemon is just perfect. It's very adorable, and I think it's very capable in battle. Primarina just deserves way more credit than it actually gets. Next, number 9 is a Pokemon that I rarely talk about. But it's Sauspuck. This Pokemon, I think, is a sleeper hit of Gen 5. Sure, it's not really remarkable at all anything, but it's just a solid all-around Pokemon. Its pre-evolution Deerling is just so cute, and I think the concept of false Pokemon changing their appearance with each season is pure brilliant. I really like all four forms of Saucebuck, but I definitely like its winter form the most, as it's pretty much a reindeer. Now, I do have a strong bias for winter since it is my favorite season, but all of them are great though. And the same can be said for Sawsmog as a whole. Following that at number 8 is Toucanon. He's one of the most underrated regional bird in my opinion. It really sucks that not many people pay attention to Toucanon because it's actually one of the better regional birds in my eyes. I tend to use the new regional bird in my first playthrough of each new generation, so Toucanon did end up on my team for my first playthrough of Sun and Moon, and I really liked it. Also, this thing is angry literally all the time, and I think that's hilarious. I haven't even gotten to talking about Shiny Toucanon, and it is just so freaking good. Might be one of the best from Gen 7 in my opinion. Sure, Toucanon may not have that many bells and whistles compared to other regional birds, but it's just a solid all-around Pokemon and can be a pretty decent fit on anyone's team. Number 7 is going to go to Leafeon, one of three, yes, three Eeveevolutions to make the list. This is honestly a contender from a new favorite Eeveevolution. Every single time I've used it, I've loved it. And the design is just adorable. But most of the flack toward Leafeon seems to go towards its usability. Pure Grass admittedly is not the best type for either offense or defense, and Leafeon doesn't seem to get that much coverage in its move pool. However, I think Leafeon is more than usable enough for it to be beneficial to my team, as it legit carried my team for a bit in Shiny Pearl. No joke. This thing is actually pretty darn capable on the physical side, but it's great physical attack and defense, impressing me more than letting me down, honestly. Not to mention this Pokemon is just super chill and hates conflict. It's literally just like me. It's kind of my spiritual Pokemon or something. Maybe that's why I get assigned to the grass type every time I take one of those Pokemon type quizzes or something. Number 6 is Glaceon. Much of what I already said about Leafeon can be pretty much said about Glaceon as well. But I don't need to tell you that Glaceon is more underrated since I have it a spot higher. Okay, so maybe I did anyway. Regardless, Glaceon in my opinion is possibly even more usable than Leafeon. With good enough coverage and actually really good stats, even though all the evolutions share the same BST. I got to use one for the first time when uh, I played Bright Diamonds last fall, and while it was a pain to get Eevee and actually evolve it given how late you have to wait to get Glaceon, I still feel like it was worth it. Plus, it's just plain adorable, much like Eeveeon. Halfway through the list at number 5, which is gonna go to Aurorus. Of all the fossil Pokemon out there, this one seems to get overlooked the most. And that's a shame, because this Pokemon has so much potential. 
but it is overshadowed by many other fossils. Yes, this Pokemon is pretty much allergic to fighting and steel types, but when this Pokemon gets going, it's just amazing. Not to mention it has such an amazing design with a beautiful shiny to boot. I've always loved this Pokemon ever since my first playthrough of X and Y, and I'll always say this is my favorite fossil. Number 4 is going to be a Pokemon that I don't think many of all were expecting, but it's Delphox. I was originally going to put either Brakeson or Fennekin in the spot instead of Delphox, but people seem to love them, especially Fennekin. The same can't quite be said about Delphox though, and that's just so sad. The entire concept of Delphox is amazing. A fox that happens to be a wizard, and it's only the second ever Pokemon to use the Fire Psychic combo, which is amazing for a starter. Though its hidden ability does kind of suck. <laughs> also, I want to shout out Delphox's shiny, which is actually amazing. Like a silver fox with a purple cape, that is just so cool in my opinion. All in all, everything around Delphox, I think is great. It's just the design that turns a lot of people off, and while I can understand why, it's nowhere near as bad as many turned out to be. Fucking M4. If we ever get another Pokemon in Legends game, then I really hope that Fennekin is one of the starters because Delphox absolutely deserves a regional variant, one that could easily improve the design of this otherwise underrated fire starter. Top 3 already! Number 3 is gonna go to Flareon. Easily the most underrated evolution in my opinion. I just don't get the hate toward Flareon. Most of the hate comes from its usability once again, even despite the amazing stats that Flareon has. Like, on paper, this Pokemon could be absolutely amazing, but the moves that it gets is what lets it down for a lot of people, and that just makes me so sad. This Pokemon desperately needed the physical special split that came with Diamond and Pearl, because Flareon was one of the Pokemon that was negatively affected with the stat change that came with Gold and Silver. In Gen 1, when the special stats were just one stat, and when Fire was considered special, Flareon was actually pretty good. But then Gold and Silver came along, and Flareon suffered. And even when the split did happen in Gen 4, Flareon didn't get a good physical fire move that wasn't Fire Fang and Flare Blitz until Generation 6. But little do people know that Flareon can still actually be pretty amazing, even before Gen 4. While it does struggle with hitting hard with stab moves, it's got great coverage with plenty of other physical moves at its disposal. Heck, I got to use Flareon for the first time when I replayed Fire Red this past summer, and I was legitimately impressed at how good it actually was. Heck, my little Flareon named Shaggy single-handedly swept Sabrina's gym thanks to its great special defense and Shadow Ball being a physical move. That right there made me love Flareon that much more, and I already loved it a lot prior to that playthrough. <laughs> this is just a great Pokemon and deserves to be loved. The runner up at number 2 is going to be Chikorita. Why does this Pokemon get so much hate? It's so cute, and both of its evolutions have great designs. Also, shout out to Ash's baby from the anime for being absolutely precious. But yeah, sure. Chikorita is not a groundbreaking Pokemon, as it does indeed suffer for the early part of any Jota playthrough, but I just don't get the hate towards Chikorita. It gets outclassed a lot, even by literally all of the other grass starters, and that just sucks. I don't care if this isn't one of the best starters from a usability perspective. I just love this little thing, and I wish others did too. It's just precious, it's adorable, it's got a great shiny, it's not a bad Pokemon, and I wish other people understood that. Finally, we've come to number one, and it's a Pokemon that I've always defended with all of my heart since day one. But what is my number one underrated Pokemon? Papoyo. I've always used water starters in most of my playthroughs, and my eyes were immediately set on Papoyo the moment I saw it in the first gameplay trailer for Sun and Moon back in 2016. But then it quickly became popular to hate the little guy, and I hated that so much. This Pokemon holds a special place in my heart, and not just because it evolves into literally my favorite Pokemon of all time, but I've always been a big fan of sea lions, and after seeing the sea lion and seal show at Hershey Park this past summer, 
That always solidified my love for them. I also have a copy of Papio plushies and even a Papio hoodie that I always wear during the colder times of the year. There was this one time where I wore that hoodie to college one day in late 2017, and some students saw it, but then some were mocking Papio right in front of my face, calling it worst order and other crap as well. But I didn't care what I said. My heart was set in stone on the Papio line, and I just loved them all the bits, including Papio. There's just no way I can ever hate this little cutie, and I do believe it's the most underrated Pokemon of all time. Wow, that was my list already. In any case though, I hope I got to shed some light on some Pokemon that don't get as much love as they do. Because I think all of these Pokemon are great in their own right, and I hope more people appreciate them as much as I do. But what do you guys think? What do you think is the most underrated Pokemon? Definitely be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't done so while you're down there. And that's gonna do it for me in this video. I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. This is DSPX900 signing off.